Hi, it's Leah here to tell you about Dr. Anthony Pinozo. He's a pain specialist located in Southern Palm Beach County. So if you are somebody that you know is suffering in pain, Dr. Pinozo is the one you guys need to call and make that call today because living in pain is no way to go through life. Dr. Pinozo has been in practice now for more than 49 years. He's treated more than 73,000 patients for pain. He's an expert when it comes to diagnosing the pain and he has had huge turnarounds. In fact, people with living with scoliosis, he has had nearly a 100% turnaround. Lumbar pain as well. If you've got lower back pain, if you're suffering with migraines or flat feet pain, maybe pain in your elbows, your neck, your shoulders, Dr. Pinozo can help you. And the greatest thing is he can help you without drugs, without surgery, and without having to go through weeks and months of rehabilitation. Give him a call today. Set up an appointment. It's 561-381-5800. Tune into his show Sundays, 11 to noon. And now, here's this week's edition of the Dr. Pinozo Sports and Medicine Hour. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. It's Sunday. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. And I hope everyone ate a lot of turkey. Hey, who is this guy? Who's which guy? You. Me? Oh, that's right. I've been here. So let me introduce my <laughs> cast of wonderful characters. You want to be introduced? Sure. You okay. Understand. We got the blonde bomber here. We got a pretty boy surfer. Next to him is seeing the lovely, good-looking Dr. Pinozo. Uh, in our in our booth, we got the great Connie, who I haven't seen in a long time. We got Freddie from Amp2. And guess who we got next to Freddie? Who we got? We got that beautiful Linda who's taking care of something. I have no idea. She's probably sending the invitations to a party. Probably. She's wearing an elephant. Really? <laughs> I used to like camels because I like the hump. <laughs> <laughs> ba ba boom. Okay. So everybody... We'll follow that. Okay. So everybody... <laughs> This is a time that everyone goes out shopping for Christmas presents, okay? And they buy things because they think it's going to work or they think it's going to help them. So let me tell you about some of the things that are out there in some very prestigious magazines, Doc. It's called the Circulation Improving Leg Wrap. What it does is circulates your legs so you don't get cramp and helps the blood flow through your legs. What do you think of that one? Baloney. Okay. So you wouldn't pay $199 for that, right? I wouldn't pay a penny. Okay, that's one down. Okay, folks, listen, because I, I, I got something afterwards. Then they've got the superior headache relieving wrap. Now, let me explain what that means. Headache relieving back. You know what that means, right? It's, a, it's a wrap. Where do you put it? Right around your head. <laughs> oh, and that, that, no. that costs $59.95. Don't okay. do it. Don't do it, people. Okay, now, and we got the cordless neck and shoulder wrap that... Direct heat goes right to your shoulder and relieves your pain so you don't have to worry about pain. What do you think about that, Doc? That's a capital B Maloney. All right. Doesn't That's 100 work. bucks, Doc. $100? $100. Give it to your favorite charity. Don't buy that. Oh, wait. This is, this is the Christmas gift. Now I'm going to do something else. <laughs> then you got the back stretching pain reliever for thirty nine ninety five. You lay down in a funny kind of position and, and it stretches your back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you ready for this one? This is, this is going to be your favorite one. It's the infrared pain relieving wrap. It, it's got little buttons that light up to get rid of your back pain. $200. Wow. You're charging not enough money, Doc. <laughs> so, folks, the reason I brought this up is, you know, you you got to be smart about your health and your body. Wow. If someone comes in to you with severe back pain, what do you do? How do you get, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, someone said, I got really bad back pain. I've been using this, I've been using that, and I still have the pain. What do you, what do, you do? Man, well, we have new listeners every, every day, buddy. We have a whole routine that we do. I mean, everybody's treated, you know, like a new person that uh, we've so never you, seen before. You, 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 I, I, last week it said what you so do. The first thing we do is uh, have them do the paperwork. Right. It's important. Yeah, especially when you get paid. <laughs> yeah. Then I have them walk in, and I watch them walk in. Right. And then we go into the examining rooms, and they sit there, and I sit with them, and we take a history. Why are you here? What do you, you know, what do you want me to do for you? Right. And we go in detail on the complaint, and the questions are uh, unique to that complaint. Okay. Um, in other words, um, say you have uh, trouble with the hip, so I'm going to ask about walking, getting out of a chair. Uh, things like that wake you up at night mm-hmm. those are all ar- around that area so that uh, when you answer those questions yes or no usually or uh, I don't ask for a description usually mm-hmm. it's a yes or no because I'm, I'm asking questions based on the anatomy that we know 
So uh, none of these, the, the history is extremely important. I don't know if you uh, listeners understand this, but when you go to medical school, the history that they teach you how to take is very, very important. And that tells you just about everything. And right. then you verify it with an examination, which we do, which is a special examination. Then, um, then we go to the um, uh, x-ray we take, which is, uh, 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 well, I have a patent on it. It's, I did research on it. It's an engineering study is actually right. what it is. It shows me how you bear weight and uh, why you have a complaint. So in other words, we know where the complaint is. Then we look at the film. And then we uh, uh, show you what you have and why you have it. And um, then I'll ask you, you want me to get rid of this? It might take a shot or two. Uh, if they say yes, we go to the um, big exam room with the uh, C-arm in it mm -hmm. and uh, the fluoroscope. And uh, we find the structure that we already know where that pain is. We right. just have to see it so we can put a shot in it. And that's how you get the 100% relief. Which is amazing. Just like that. Now, you know, by I'm the a, time... I'm going to tell you how silly I am. Pardon me? I thought... I'm going to tell you how silly I am. Ago. I thought he was going down a different path. Who? <laughs> this knucklehead over here. Knucklehead. I, thought, I thought that he was going to say, what better gift to give at this time of the year than a Pinozo card? I was going to say that, but that's okay. Were you going that? <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, okay. But go ahead. I didn't, no. know, I didn't know where you were Wait, going. Wait, you're on the right track, so keep going, buddy. I mean, no. what, a, what a gift. Think about it. You know, you well, get well, a, if somebody uh, can't afford it, could you buy it for him? As a I got news for you. Yeah, if but he someone... just read off two hundred dollar <laughs> gifts, and you're not too much more expensive. Well, but, but the key word is relief. Yeah, I I can get two answers of relief and relieve a headache, but it could come back tomorrow. Okay, and then he goes in and yeah, he, we're not talking about relief. We're talking about cure. Cure. There's a difference. The pain so, is not. Fair. It's like Freddie when you see these signs that say pain management. Management means someone is managing your pain. I don't want them to manage it. I already got it. <laughs> hey guys, let's call the CEO. We're gonna manage this guy's pain. You go to one guy, one doctor, you don't talk to a receptionist. Well, Manx might be there. He'll talk to you, right? Yes. He'll yeah. say, well. And the, and we they have, think I'm that, but I'm not. No. <laughs> and someone comes in for you with, with a severe back pain. I know it's hard to give a, to diagnose on the air. And I mean, real severe pain in the, in the neck. Uh, an example, I want people to have an idea of putting a wrap around your head for $100. <laughs> That's going to relieve a, a migraine, for example. What does something like that cost someone out of pocket to, uh, just to come in and get that? What? To get a migraine, to get a shot for a migraine. Uh, it's, it's $190. Okay, so $190, yeah. and then it never comes back again. It does not come back, uh, unless you have a very severe injury. Now, remember, we wrote the book on this. Yes, I know. You're not going to ask another guy, another doctor about this, because they don't do this kind of work. Especially the ENT guys, and you go to them or a neurologist, they have no clue because they Let don't. Let me stop you on that one. Kind of work on TV. They I, do great work, but not you know, this kind do, of work. We don't even rehearse this damn show, and you no. you help me out. <laughs> a um, what, what do you call that guy with the brain thing? Uh, a, a neurologist. Okay, a neurologist just came up with a new product for ringing in the ears. Mm -hmm. He divorced his wife. No, I'm sorry. He came up with a new product where you put two drops in each ear. Three times a day, and it'll get rid of the ringing in the ear. Not true. Okay. Tell them why. Well, the source of that ringing is not in the ear. Okay. That's why. But that's a good point. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point. Yeah. Your treatments are always good if they're aimed at the right structure. So, folks, what, what, what Dr. Pinozzo is really saying yeah. in layman's turn is if you don't know where the pain came from, you can't cure it. All right. There's other things, uh, some vitamins. You know, remember what that oh, is? Oh, the guy that we saw on, on online, remember, he claims 40,000. But they the have to keep using together? it. together? Who gets the chair and who gets the couch? I just want to know which one of <laughs> you guys get the, get, get the man no, chair. No, no, I looked this up. I saw this at home, and there was some guy claiming to, to cure, you know, ringing in the ear. And um, he's saying he's curing it, but yet you got to use this device every day. So that's not a cure. <laughs> So people don't understand treat. what Dr. Pinozzo does. Well, it's, it's also not aimed at where the it's at, thing, aimed at the ear. It's where music. the thing starts at. It's not the ear. Right. See, you got, first of all, you got to know that. Uh, so anything aimed at the ear is going to be a failure in treatment, absolute failure. So now, folks, anyone that bought this stuff to give Christmas presents, you've got a 30-day guarantee, which you could send it back in 25 because everyone else, if, after hearing what Dr. Pinozzo said, and I think Dr. Pinozzo is very happy today about uh, the game. The Ohio-Michigan game. 
The yes. Big O won. We won that game. Uh, Not we, but they. they. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it was an amazing game. Fred, you get the coach from Michigan when he interviewed him. He said it was bad calling. The referees, uh, the referees didn't call the plays right. I'm really upset. I'm going to take it up. And Is that then, why they lost? Because that's the Jim Harbaugh. He, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. yeah so he, that's why he lost. Not oh, because yeah. he got his butt beat. Yeah. So now the guy, uh, Urban Meyer, who won. He, he faked a phone call and his phone rang and he said, excuse me one second, honey, I'm doing an interview. Yes, I'll bring home a quart of milk. <laughs> and I think I think he was, Urban Meyer was great. Okay. Was Just so you know, folks, Dr. Pinozo was a graduate of Ohio State Medical School. Yes. And he interned at, hold it, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. 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 Those pieces really messed me up. Philadelphia. So we're, we're not talking about a guy that graduated from Guadalajara that's trying to uh, help you. <laughs> no. We're talking about Guadalajara. Him. Guadalajara. <laughs> Guadalajara. <laughs> Holy uh, smoked. Now, this is a uh, premium, uh, premier education I had. I mean, uh, you don't know you're getting it as you get it. You know, you don't know that. At, afterwards, year by year, you mm -hmm. say, boy, I really was educated well because this stuff comes back to you. Well, you, you got three people right here that have, that have used you. Or uh, the, my uh, um, professor uh, just died lately, uh, Ernie Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was a fantastic, world-class wow. guy. Just died, so he must have, he must have had a good life. He was 90-some, yeah. God bless him. Mm -hmm. Well, the guy that did Crohn's disease, uh, he is, I think, still living in his 90s. He's the guy that, dis his name was Crohn, naturally, and he discovered Crohn's disease. And uh, one of my doctors know him very well because he took a course with him, and he said he was a guy that took the subway every day read his newspaper or a medical book, very and was loaded with money. And they asked him questions. said, why don't you retire? And he looked at him and said, why? Yeah. Why? You help so many people if you can do it, uh, if you stay working. Well, I mean, well, you, you do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what, I mean, you've, 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 met a, you've met and cured well, a since lot of I my friends. Well, since I retired, we uh, figured out what migraine is all about, concussion. Wait, you, re you retired and you didn't tell me. Uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, ten years ago, I retired. Didn't you retire three times or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so every, I believe it or not. I, I, that's I'm where you had time every, to do the studies. Uh, I'm retiring yeah. every day. He's experimenting. <laughs> uh, feet. We figured out uh, what makes uh, feet work. And, uh, it's amazing. Uh, we, and we, I know this. We could take care of flat feet, no problem at all. And um, knees. <laughs> um, and hips and lower backs. Now, the lower back, that's really important. I mean, that's... When you're getting rid of your trouble the same day right. that you walk in that office, you got to know that's pretty good. Well, uh, first of all, people pretty don't good. realize what happens. I mean, I, you've got to come into his office. Or, Freddie, if they want to get on, give all the sites that he's on if they want to get on because you, you're, you're the genius well, we, behind we this. put him on Facebook now. So he's on Pernozo.tv on Facebook. Right. You can pick him up on Amp2 TV Productions. You can pick him up on Two Boys from Brooklyn. You he's can pick him up from... Different places. He's all over. He's on YouTube, YouTube too. Yeah, on YouTube and Pinozo.tv. Yeah. And he's got his own app, a free app, folks, where you, if you're skeptical and you want to waste uh, and you want to w waste two minutes of your life, you could download this and see every single thing that we say is true. You could also catch him on Channel 19, where he has his reality That's show. AT and T Channel 19. Uh, you verse, but you can catch it uh, on uh, on streaming. W W. Good luck with that. Y E. 19.com. 19. 19. You know this one by heart. I don't even know this one. I forgot it already. www.e19.com, I think. Y E Y. Okay. No, W E Y. 19. 19.com. Right. And, and, and if you use your computer, you can go to Pinozo.tv, and on the website, all three stations are on there. But you must use your computer for 19. Right. Show 19, you must I think uh, people should uh, to try to get it because that is really, that's reality. There is no script on these programs. No, and, and, and you're these... seeing the patients as they tell me what's wrong with yeah. them, as we find out what's, what to do for them, and, and then you see them uh, improve. And they'll tell you right on which the is, camera. Which is amazing. And this is the camera guy right now. And, and also, the. I, it's on YouTube. The episodes are on YouTube, too. Yeah. So that way... Yeah, how do you get to that? Just you go to search box and YouTube, put Anthony Pinozo, MD, and MD. that's it. Yeah. It's like 30, 40 videos yeah. That, yeah. that are full. Some of them are full shows, you know, half-hour shows, hour shows, whatever. But uh, that's the real thing. So, um, you know, like you got a question back there where some orthopedic surgeon says they... Uh, 
If you want, I can stop with the treat something. If you want, I can stop with the questions. But you're going to see that example uh, if you tune in on the YouTube. You'll see those examples. Well, well, which is very amazing. And sometimes I'll repeat myself only because we have new listeners every time. We had with Leah, which is one of the most astounding things I've ever seen. When I first brought her in three <laughs> years ago, that was three years ago. Wow. When she came in with uh, ankle problems, and when you come to the party, you Leah will be there though, at the Greek. He's sit and talk. I, and the beauty of it is that the doc asked Leah just to walk up and down. And we're talking about a, a, a young lady that's very active in sports. And for her to wear an ankle, a boot, you know, a boot for the ankle, would be very cumbersome for her to do what she does. Tell what you did. I, I well, still get amazed by that. Well, they, uh, she went to a podiatrist. Yes, who was going to? Podiatry is it's a legitimate science, but it is a surgery concept. Yes. It's like an orthopedic surgery concept. But they don't do the uh, musculoskeletal work right. uh, that I do. See, so uh, there's a big difference there. So you want to um, you want to always go to the medical uh, doctor first rather than the surgeon first. Because so a lot of times yeah. they could take yeah. care of the problem. So what did you see when you saw it? Well, I just uh, I looked at the ankle and I said, uh, take a walk here and uh, tell me if it hurts. And it didn't. So okay. I said, well, it's not the ankle, kid. <laughs> Gave her a shot. Then, then we did our thing, you know, and it was a lower back. Gave her right. a couple of shots there, and that was the end of it. One day, one day treatment for all Which of is it. amazing. I mean, if you really think of it logically, um, nothing against the podiatry field, but here's a, here's a doctor that studied podiatry and was, and was going to give her a shot in her ankle. Now, chances are that wasn't going to go away. No, they that's wanted the to do a, They want to put a boot on. Yeah, referred pain, which right? Which may, may make it worse. I right. mean, you know, you just don't want to do that. But, I mean, that, that to me is amazing. You want to get to some questions? Doc, I got you before you had a chance to tell me. Sure. Go but wait a minute. Before you get to questions, Max had uh, oh, a yeah. comment. Oh, yeah. Go I ahead, want, Max. I wanted to bring up about uh, coaches. Okay. Coaching and concussions and oh, the correct okay. way of hitting. Yeah, they were on real sports. Yeah, I think there was a thing on concussions with Bryant Gumbel on the head. Mm -hmm. They started out in high school and they had 17 kids that have died uh, from concussions in the last three years, wow. six per year, and um, and 60 to 75 percent of the kids in high school get uh, the concussions at practice, mm. which is a huge thing. But at Dartmouth, they're practicing without contact, and supposedly the concussion rate went from 17 down to two. Um, Dartmouth is a college. Yeah. It's not a junior high but, school. Uh, it's not what, a high school. What, what are the? Uh, I think these uh, injuries are due to the coaching staff. Oh, the, what happened they, is they, they have to know how the body works and right. how to hit the the, the the runner, and you don't use your head. That's you called spe it's called spearing. Spearing, correct, yeah. which is, which is against the law, right? And uh, all, that the uh, all that injury goes right to the neck. Well, the person and you can get paralyzed with that. I oh mean, yeah, really, the per uh, the coach. Nick Bonacani's son. But that's right, and I, I was in school at that time, and I think he did that. Where did he do that? It was, it was, on, it was in the in, in, the, yeah. in, uh, in uh, Foxborough. Foxborough. Okay, we knew that, and it was a shame because we were treating uh, spinal cord injuries. Right. And he still has that, you know. He's still, I think he's still alive. But yeah, he, he's, he has he's multiple. Alive in the he, uh, you see, the, bo the bottom line is this, though. If you don't teach to hit, then when the game comes along, you Oof. become very sloppy. And you start grabbing with your hands. Yeah, the coaches are not doing their job, I'll tell you right now. If you're a coach listening, I mean, look at what you're doing and make sure these kids are, are taught well. Well, here's the right way to do things. Here's the thing about the coaches. The one they interviewed was from Texas, and he was proud that his kids were hitting <laughs> like head on head. <laughs> do you know what I mean? They weren't winning and any games, like, but they were hitting the right way. And the you can see these them. kids, so it's not like they're getting a concussion in the NFL. It, it's like... This starts from Pop Warner or whatever, sure, all Pop the way Warner. up to pro. I mean, was there a, a pro uh, football injured. player called Hornsby or Horn? Horn Rick, was, Horns, was a baseball. Rick Hornsby. Huh? It was a baseball player. Baseball player. Baseball player. What was his name? Rick Hornsby. Hornsby. His car, his okay, car he, is worth about $2.5 million. Uh, yeah, well, he had a bad neck, and he had an arm pain, and we knew what that was because that's the kind of work we were doing, and we trained that way. Uh, and uh, he had an operation. Now, today, you don't need an operation at all. We know how to handle that, uh, and especially with tingling in the fingers. Now, if you're a baseball player oh, yeah. or a football player and you get tingling in your fingers, we could take care of that in one day. 
I mean, somebody's going to say the guy's nuts. I am not. Yeah, how do you this do that in the Vegas, do. though? Here's my evidence right here. <laughs> can, I, can I just say one last thing about this? All right. They had this, uh, it's called USA f- foot, Football, uh, f- Foodball, whatever. Um, foosball? Have, I can't remember. <laughs> Foos, foosball? They, they have rules and regulations that are not followed by the coaches. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it's recommended but not enforced. And in Somerville, Massachusetts, the mayor banned full contact football in high school. And he's getting like all these calls. I don't think know. you could do that, can you? He, he's you doing can, it. You can, but he's I'm going to tell it. you something. It's uh, it's not the fault of the coaches. If you've played the game, uh, let me just say something. Freddie was a coach for a, for a major and for we a major tr- and we try to football teach football team and all the way to the NFL. You teach not to lead with your head. What right. I call spear, uh, um, spearing. But the bottom line here, in the heat of the moment. You don't say, okay, let me sit down. I'm about to tackle this guy. Let me make sure that my shoulders go forward. My head. Right. You know, that's no, the no, no, that all comes, that all comes it automatically. Happens. It's due to your training. That's right. If you're trained properly, you will correct that as you're doing it. You're well, that, not going to make a mistake. That's, like what, that. that's called muscle recall. And the only it, way to do that is to co- practice and the over coaches, and over yeah. again. The coaches have to take responsibility for that. Yeah, the coaches can take responsibilities for 10 years. You can teach one player how to hit, and it only takes one bad hit, one bad fall. But see, the, but, uh, what are the, t- the team is their asset yeah. to win. No, you don't want now, them you, to do it, you, Doc. <laughs> they just do it. If you get it. your army massacred, I mean, Listen, well, my son, you don't have an army anymore. No, my but, son was taught since seven years of age how to tackle, and he played high school ball. And he got a concussion because in one play – he went the wrong way, and he tackled the guy with his head instead of his shoulders. Now, he didn't realize he was doing no. it. The other, the, thing, the other thing you have to worry about is anger management. You see, the football... Uh, That's an angry sport, buddy. You're never going to get them no, calm. <laughs> it should be done correctly. Yeah, but they're not going to do it. not like... angry. It should be a science to them. You have to know how to hit. You have to know how to hit a runner. Why not take his feet? You don't have to hit him on the head. Here's, you know. here's the thing. You're right. And phrase right, but here's the thing: in the heat of the moment, they know if I no, grab the guy's face mask, no, it's 15 I, yards. I do not uh, agree with that. There's no heat of the moment. If you're a professional player, you have to play professionally. Yeah, there's no heat of the moment. Well, you know, let me ask you a question. You have to take care of the anger management on, on the team. Of if, course, but but it doesn't occur. Remember they, the Super they Bowl don't do game it. when they were on the five yard line. <laughs> And they had a chance to win that game. Yeah, oh, the Patriots against the uh, Se- against the Seahawks. Seahawks. I'm a Patriot player. I want to separate you, the ball carrier, from the ball. I am going to hit you with everything I got. I am going to but go through you. There's a simple you. way to do it. You don't have to be too rough with it. You got to be more scientific, is what I'm saying. I'm saying, of course, you what you said Doc, is true. If I'm you 380 have to pounds. There ain't too much scientific. <laughs> mean, I'm a brick that, house. That, that, I'm a he's there to kill you. I'm Listen, a brick house. Running, and I'm going to separate if you're running you from the ball. And you grab that foot. He's not running anymore. Yeah, but I ain't interested and, in stopping you from running, Doc. I'm, I'm interested in separating you from the ball because okay, you're going to you, win this game. Right. You take the foot, and then as they're now, falling, foot. you put your hand in there and take the ball. It's got to be more scientific. Well, let me tell you something you just said. I would say in <laughs> one game, if a guy tackles the guy by his feet, it's one. It's a miracle. It's a, thank you. It's a miracle. Because <laughs> that guy's standing up, and you got four guys converging on this one guy and they're going to hit him they're going to hit him as hard as they can I'm not saying it's not complicated but uh, but the training has to be such that you can use it in the game and protect yourself football's an you're angry not a game. good player if you get hurt yeah but football's an angry game especially when you have uh, the uh, medical staff and they're putting if you get a hamstring <laughs> they're putting you on the bench for three weeks I mean what good is that that's no good at all Look, the, the, the head guy, Del Rio from uh, Gainesville, he's been out uh, for three weeks with a concussion. Now, Jack Del Rio. That's his son. That's his father. Yes, Jack Del Rio. You ever watch him play from Minnesota? Yeah. The guy was vicious. Dick Buckus. You remember Dick oh, Buckus? Oh, my God. Do you think Dick that Buckus. Dick Buckus. Now, Dick Buckus had 27 concussions. Oh, and yeah. He still he was... went in the game. Wow. Because in those days, they didn't have any rules. <laughs> they went like this, Doc. Can you see my finger? Yeah, get back in. <laughs> they used to, yeah. and, and Lawrence Taylor told me when he got hit, and he had ringing in his ears. You oh. know what they did? It's a swallow and aspirin, get back in there. Yeah. He says, but I don't know which way. How about way. Singletary? He goes, I don't remember which way to go. But I spoke to Lawrence. I didn't speak to this guy. I don't know which way to go. He says, just follow my finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what Frey said? There was That's no protocol right. back in those days. None. I mean, but football was. Yeah, I think a lot can be, a lot more can be done. Now, oh, it's sure. going to cost the NFL billions of dollars for concussions, which does not exist. Right. And now the listener is going to say, well, what about all these professionals? They don't do the kind of work that I'm talking about, that you can diagnose these things. 
The reason why they, there is no brain damage. Have you ever read of brain damage from this? No. 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 That's because it doesn't happen. They came up with the word called concussion. Well, there's no. They're looking for brain damage. It's it's a conclusion that it is brain damage, mm -hmm. but nobody ever comes up with it. No, that's so, correct. So it's not brain damage. It's high neck. Well, let's uh, let's get to some questions first. Go ahead. Because I have, okay, I have to look studious now. Except for the CMS thing, but I want he can do his question. Well, you want no get that no get that away. If you got something there to go, go. That was a real nice discussion for the coaches for football. Really, they they have to meet a higher standard. You got to protect these kids because they have a life. You can't let them get hurt out there. No. Okay. On Wednesday, I walked in the office. There was two guys at the window talking to Dr. P, and I thought they were doctors or patients at first, and then I saw the badges on them. It was CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services guys. But you happy to see them, Dr. You take off for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> He's been asking for like at least over five years for somebody to come in and look at his process. Right. And these guys come in, and I wish I would have videotaped them, but I didn't. But we split up. He had one guy, I had the other guy, and we both explained the process. You explained it, and he explained it. I explained what I videotaped, what I witnessed on oh, a day-to-day -day okay. basis. And they thought they actually thought that people keep coming back, you know, like on a regular basis. I said, no, only the scoliosis and, you know, kyphosis, whatever. Like this? Patients. And, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they use big words because it gives less of <laughs> I thought you were just a beach bum. You really are smart. They went to 22 of his patients that we don't know, right. and not one of them gave him a bad, you know, report. Why would and they? I know, but I'm just, that's, but that's why they came to the office. And their recommendation is going to be they're going to finally send somebody from Medicare, not somebody representing them, but somebody yeah. from there personally to go through the whole process. That's a huge thing. The problem with Medicare is. is so you're a committee, and you have to know what your standards are. Mm -hmm. So they go to the literature, and they read these things. Said, okay, let's let's. This is our standard. But what they don't know is that standard is written by anesthesiology, which does not do, do musculoskeletal work. They do don't do it musculoskeletal work. So therefore, they'll pay for a, a, a facet shot, but they won't pay for an annulus shot because the anesthesiologists don't know how to do that. Right. So that was the uh, the. Um, uh, the problem with my office because our standards are really high. Nobody gets us uh, one day f uh, relief of uh, pain in the leg like I do. But which is totally amazing. So they can't even believe it. So that's why. I, that's yeah, that's these guys are going to go. We've got to send on. the Medicare people in. They've got to see the, this. <laughs> they're going to go on the website. They're going to go on the YouTube. They're going to watch all the things that have been recorded mm -hmm. so they have, so they understand the process better. And, okay. then, and then they're going to write, you know, then they're going to write their thing and they're going to, their first opinion is going to be that somebody from Medicare physically come into the office and see the process. First yeah, They were not going to do it. And that one I'm going to video. They're not going to do it because uh, these people are elite. They don't do that. You know, they just don't do that. Well, well if you I, got, if you got, if you got, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, have, I have a story. I went into your office on, on Monday or Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. And there was a guy screaming in the back. Not only was he screaming, oh, he was screaming in Spanish. <laughs> well, you're the only yeah, one that the whole meeting that understood it. So I said, I said, what the hell? So I go to the back and said, what is wrong with you? Oh, this hurts. I said, that hurts. I said, how long you had that pain? Nine years, he tells me that. Yeah, that guy. Nine years? Yeah. And I said, and what about now? And he's going up and down. He's doing the squats. He says, holy smokes, I got no, no pain, no pain. I said, so what are you screaming for? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I remember you talking to him. I said already. to him, I said, man up, man. Get well, the other shot in the hip. No, that, I can't do this. I, I, <laughs> holy mackerel. That's really a bad story because people listening are going to think. But it's the truth. That, you cured that him. He was being a people. baby. We're torture. We don't torture anybody. He had <laughs> five seconds. Of Doc, I shook his hand. He screamed. Huh? I shook his There's hand. Some people that he like that too. <laughs> I said, I pat him on the back. He screamed. I said, What is it with you? You're like very soft. I brought a girl, a, a, a young lady, and that that uh, doctor who had pain in her elbow and pains in her finger, and he <laughs> gave her two shots. She never, she never flinched. There was a guy video never flinched. Videotaped like three weeks ago. Remember this guy for, for like 57 years of his life, he's been afraid of needles. Because he got, you know, in, uh, in school they do the t 
TB thing there. Yeah. So he remembered that. So he was terrified. So this guy never got a needle, never went for a pneumonia shot, never went After, for... No, he did in, um, you know, school. But that scared him for the rest of his... To the present day about needles. So his he was shot, terrified to get a shot from Dr. P. The pneumonia P. shot is hard. Uh, so hurts. He did get the shot. He, he got the shot. He didn't, he didn't feel a thing. <laughs> I didn't feel and a he thing. couldn't believe he didn't feel a thing. You right. know, and he was like, you, you finally got me over my fear of needles Listen, now, you had a patient in there who took six shots. Big hockey player. Right in front of me. What, you can mention his name. And you know what? Me. What did he tell you? He turned around like a tomato. He says, I don't like shots. Jerry. But I need, yeah, <laughs> but I need to be cured. And I'm going to tell you something. He says, holy mackerel. I'm feeling fantastic. You know, you know what, yes. folks? If you've gone, everyone has gone to a dentist. I would rather take 10 of Dr. Pinozo's shot than that Novocaine shot. That Novocaine shot is, in, in that mouth, is the worst shot you've ever taken. It is. I, I seriously, seriously. Especially if they hit a nerve. Hey, Doc, you see my face? How good it was looking? So they did, I did the Pinozo stuff. Effect. <laughs> what, you take a shot? I, no, I took the Pinozo. No, I do the Pinozo walk. What does it have to do with the show? Absolutely nothing, but I wanted to let everyone I know, know that this guy knows what? everything about medicine. <laughs> that tell him something. Though. He rubs I, out on your head, you're going to do it. I mean, you're going to be a good... Somebody person. let him in. I don't know who... Who's at that door? Carol, next time when you see this guy with the great face, don't let him in. <laughs> okay. Les That's, has been with us how many years now? With you? Three 70, years? 72. Oh, I've been 72. doing this. No, no. It's my, I, yeah, when my daughter's born, I've been doing this since, uh, since about 72. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it. Yeah, I'm going to use a hammer yeah, on you soon. Yeah. Me, oh, by the way, these uh, Medicare people. We were always doing high, 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 um, high level work. The problem is, people don't understand the high level work because they don't ask the right questions. I think the people. So finally, we got to the uh, the money people who are paying for all this. Right. And if they come in, they're going to be really surprised. This is top of the line, world class treatment. And I'm not kidding. Uh, and well, the thing is, we videotaped yeah. like ten patients. From Medicare, explaining and Dr. P explaining every the whole process, doing everything on tape, making it idiot proof. And you send it to Medicare. Send it to Medicare. And what they tell you? And they said, stop sending DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what yeah, they said? Well, with yeah, but, emails. but but even though on their form it says you have the right to send in. A well, wait a DVD. minute, wait a minute. They tell you to stop. Yeah. But they didn't tell but you that they were going to be more. That, that almost like stop. That, we understand that, wait, wait it. A minute, that wasn't official. That was no. these two guys, investigators. That yeah. wasn't official from them. You have the right to remain silent. But, but you say maybe. So wait a minute. They tell you to but, stop sending that, but they didn't come up with. Okay, we understand but, what you do. No. But somebody official said you have to quit sending those CDs in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and then when I told these two officials uh, that were there uh, for Medicare, um, I said one of the reports that was written back to Dr. P was that we're not going to pay this claim because you made no eye contact with the patient. <laughs> really? That's true. And I said to these two Are guys. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah I'm serious. I said, contact. how could that possibly be? I'm saying this let's, to these You know what? Next week, let's call that guy on the air. What do you say? <laughs> Can we call that him on the air? no eye contact with the patient. And he's, this is a doctor making this, this uh, an, you know, an alley. Well, we don't know who it is. Well, he, he, put he, he, put his, he put his name. Okay, his well, name. Well, let me just tell you this. He was a doctor. That's cool. I'm an old guy. I have I have never yet seen, and this is uh, I'll swear this on a stack of Bibles, a doctor like Pinozo. But you're Jewish, so we're, no, well, I'm Jewish I'm people know more about I doctors know, than I anybody, know, I know, I know. and <laughs> that spends as much time with, with somebody. To, uh, people say, "Gee, how long do I have to wait for this guy?" He said, "You know, it's well worth it because he he knows just where to give that shot when he's done, and they always walk out pain free." Absolutely. So all you people at Medicare, let me understand. You want you want to save money? No, they want him to look at you in the eyes. Uh, look at him. Look, I don't care if you look. I yeah, said to him one time, I don't care. I don't care if you got magazines from 1942. A, that, that was a funny one because no they, eye contact. I'm the only one there, and the office, there's nobody else. They knew it was like ludicrous <laughs> that this doctor. The made guy's writing something. down all your problems, and you want him to look at. You? I said he answers his own phone. When you come to the office, he greets you. <laughs> so he's seeing you there. He takes your paperwork if you're new. You know, and then takes you into the exam room. You got a lot of time on your hands, huh? Yeah. Okay. You know, the, the, <laughs> bottom, the bottom line is I know when, the process. When, when you when, when you run out of things to say and you have no reason not to get on board this train, you come up with the most silliest things in the yeah. world, and that has got to be the ultimate stupidity I've ever heard. Ultimate. Stupidity. Try to do the same thing no, again we, and again to get the same results. Well, we have about uh, ten about ten people who have a condition. 
that you can't is not readily treatable. It's scar tissue, it's old stuff. So I showed this investigator. I said, this is one guy that you know, you interviewed him, and this is his problem right here. And I said, uh, that's scar tissue. And I said, uh, wh my little claim. <laughs> what do you want me to do with him? You want me to send him for surgery? It'll cost the, the program $80,000. Yeah. You want to do that instead of a couple hundred dollars every couple of weeks that he wants? Uh, you know, what, what do you want to do? And he says, well, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. There's a commercial that has been Ooh. on forever. Somebody is listening to the show because they took off the word, they took off scoliosis, which they always said, uh, we can cure you of, of, of like nine things. Ever since this show has been on, they got rid of scoliosis and they got rid of migraines. Ah. Okay. Yeah, but, but I'm going to tell you something. Don't take credit for that because and then you open up another Pandora's box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you. It's like, it's like. There's a certain political thing that went on, and if you voted for the candidate and you win, you can't even celebrate that. No. You can't because everybody wants to shoot you. Yeah. So the bottom line here is, no matter what Dr. Pinozzo does and how great he does it, you're always gonna have naysayers. Oh, you're always. You, you're, you know what it is? The, the well, GPs. you'll see. You'll see something in there uh, on the question. Why don't we do that? Yeah. Do we, yeah. We yeah. Else. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go you got it. You have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Al from Boston writes, I watched your show last week and wanted to call in but didn't hear the number. 800-889-0267. 800-889-0267. I heard you mention ACL damage and how to repair it isn't being done correctly. I had ACL surgery done on me and the operation and healing process is very long and my movement is nothing like it used to be. If this surgery isn't for everyone and you have a better way to fix this problem, then why aren't doctors all over the country sending me information about you? Can you explain how to fix the ACL? You can't, uh, first of all, I don't believe you can injure the ACL. There's no way to get to it. It's in the middle of the knee. So the problem is patellar in front of it. Uh -huh. And that, that is treatable. That is not the knee, by the way. That's, the, that's patellar or uh, kneecap. Uh, underneath that is the scar tissue, and that is treatable. So you don't need any ACL surgery. I wish they would stop that. There's no, there's no good uh, diagnosis for it. Right. I know the anatomy, and you can't get to it. I'm well, you're a muscular. Right you know, well, a lot of people don't know when he, when you hear Dr. Pinozzo talk, he is a musculoskeletal doctor. That's all I do for a living. That's it. And we, he doesn't prescribe <laughs> drugs or surgery. No. Nope. And you know what? If you have nothing to do one day, and you're worried about what's going to happen to you. Come and sit in his office, and all the people talk, and you'll find out there are people that, Doc, I'm giving you, what are you doing, doing the finger? This is my job. I know, i got to have another question. Okay. Doc is giving you the finger? He gave me the finger, the doctor. Watch those fingers that kill you. No, it's an index finger. Index finger. <laughs> Next question. There's my finger right there. <laughs> Larry from Boston writes, heard about your concussion discussion. Oh, I like that concussion hey, discussion. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. On the air, and we're shocked to hear you say that concussions do not affect or come from the brain. So many football players have nothing but head injury, and concussions in the NFL is putting up a billion dollars to pay those affected by this damage. Please state why you think concussion isn't head trauma, and how so many of the people are wobbly and can't walk from concussions. Uh, well, there's a re there's a reason for it. It's a, it's, it's a high neck uh, problem, and um, that's where the damage occurs, not in the brain. No, if you look at logic, every time they, they never hit really Yeah, we hit talk the about this all the time. I mean, the, the, the well, brain the is well, uh, well covered with bone and fluids and everything else. You can't hurt it. I mean, you, anyway, it'll show up. I mean, if you're, uh, and we have, and I just asked you before, have you heard of anybody having a brain injury? No. It, no, well, there's no brain injury. There see? is none. Because but they tell you, wait, 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 wait. They say they can only look at the brain if you die and they cut it open, remember? Right. That is not true. Absolutely not true. <laughs> so you got to drop dead and then they cut you open and they say there's the brain injury. Hey, Pinozzo was right. He doesn't have a concussion. <laughs> there was a guy, named uh, Sauer, remember him? He committed suicide. Yes. Sayo. 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 And they try to say what? It was they his... open up his brain. They say he had, he had brain damage. Oh, that's baloney. Same thing with the quarterback. What's his name? The snake. There are tests that, that oh, she you did? could. Yeah. There oh, are tests yes, that you could do. There are anatomical tests and uh, uh, other tests to see function, and they never find anything wrong. And the the vertigo comes from the high neck, not the brain. See. 
See, right. dude, they're they, looking they in the wrong walk. place again. Doc. They effect. can't walk. They can't it's, walk. Yeah, it's cause and effect. You can knock that out right, right now, and they they can walk. Well, they they ring your bell, doc, and they say, "Do you know what today's date is?" I don't even know what today's date. Yeah, right. well, they either. take the guy off with a concussion. Why did, Why do they ask him? Because they're asking protocol. They're asking questions to see if you have head, head injury. They, head they're trauma. in the wrong area because those are uh, neurological tests of of uh, brain function. Right. But I just explained to you, right. the brain is not injured so right. don't do that so they're looking I mean, in the wrong place yeah. i mean you're going to get wobble like when you get punched in the face you're going to get yep. wobble you're not going to remember today's date what happens when you get punched in the face you wobble your neck snaps back. neck yeah so how many fighters must have concussions and no one ever checks all them? of them all the See, ufc that's muscular guys skeletal, that's musculoskeletal work which right. is what i do yeah they don't do that. You could probably they're, fix they're everybody's fighters for a fight. <laughs> they're going to neurologists, uh, uh, <laughs> psychologists. I almost said psychopath. Orthopedic. <laughs> Some psychologists. And uh, they're missing the boat completely. Yeah, they're looking in the wrong place. Yeah, I think. Well, migraines are hey, looking in the wrong place. if anybody disagrees with me, call up. That's right. 800 889 Whether you're a doctor or whether you <clears throat> you have pain that yeah. excuse me can't be right, fixed, right. Call us up right now on the show. It's 800-889-0267. All 27 of our lines are free right now. So. And, and you know, Les, we can run an experiment, but the only problem is there's no way of me kicking you in the head without your head snapping back. No, well. <laughs> if I could do it sideways, Let's do it Manx, because, you know, Manx is a big guy. He can handle it. No, I just but it's had an my experiment. No, see, you have, you have an exposed neck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, say, what, what, if what happened? If you watch the football players, they have an exposed neck. They yeah. covered their nose, right. which is good. But their neck is exposed, and once in a while they'll put a uh, collar on yes. the collar, yeah. yeah, which will keep the injury from happening. But uh, they don't. Oh, let me interrupt. They don't you. require it. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? What'd you get fixed? All of a sudden, my neck started bothering me like never before. I've never had this problem. Right. Um, I don't know how. It, I told them about it, and it, and so he showed me where I have a curve okay. up on the t- top part of my spine, whatever. And he treated that and said, well, it's going to have to go back into place, you know, after a series of shots, whatever. And oh, I'm going to have to stop it for a second. We got a call from Kevin. Hey, Kevin, cool. come on on. Come on. Hey, on. throw the party. Let's have it. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, I got diagnosed with brachial plexus, severe nerve damage in my left shoulder going into my arm. Do you guys do anything with that? Or do you know any effects or treatments for that? What do you think, Doc? I, I don't know what uh, who diagnosed what. Uh, the the what do you call it? The neurosurgeon diagnosed the brachial plexus. Geo plexus. Bronchial. Yeah. Bronchial plexus, right? plexus. Which? Bronchial plexus. Bronchial. No, Bronchi- that's lung. Brachial plexus, not for lung, just nerve damage. It's a nerve. Bra- brachial B R A. Brachial plexus. I E L. What what are the what are the symptoms that you have? Uh, when it started, it was severe bee stings from my shoulders all the way down to my fingertips. My whole entire arm was paralyzed. And now I still have, I got a fire burning in the back of my tricep. Mm. Uh, pinky fingers I cannot touch with my thumbs. Which fingers are, on the left, which fingers on the left are, arm. yeah, which fingers are affected? Thumb, index finger? Uh, the, right now my pinky finger and the whole inside of my left arm from my forearm into my wrist and into my hand. Yeah, well, uh, you, you probably have a curvature up up in the neck. And uh, we'd have to look at that and uh, correct it. Right. And uh, usually uh, usually it's a couple of shots and you get uh, over it. But I would not um, take a surgery in the, in the neck lightly. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Right, that's what they were saying. Uh, it would cause major damage if they were to go in there now as I wouldn't heal up from it. It would cause more. Well, if you have a curvature, you know you're not going to correct it that way. They want to they want to stabilize it uh, right. with the fusion, and uh, which I'm totally against. Uh, as a last resort, you might do that, but but uh, yeah, we'd uh, we'd uh, we have a program for that. We'd look at that. Yeah. So okay. Kevin, you got you nothing to lose. Hold on, I got a question for Kevin. Hey, Kevin, are you an athlete? No. Are you in construction or any heavy duty lifting? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. I'm an electrician and I do all that. Okay. Construction and lifting and everything. Yeah, so he's got a curvature. And we talked about this before. People, uh, players are getting operated for thoracic outlet. Remember yes. that? That's what well, I thought you were going to say. Uh-huh. That's what, is this what this is? That's what this is. Yeah. That's what I thought he was going to go down where they removed the rib and all that. Yeah, <laughs> don't, uh, you don't want to do that. They, uh, they where did this where are you uh, from? I'm in West Palm. 
Oh, oh well, okay, hey, come on in tomorrow. Let's look at it. 561, Kevin, 381-5800. That's 561 561- Three eight one fifty eight hundred. Make an appointment. The doctor will answer your call. Now remember, remember the surgeons are excellent at what they do, but yes. uh, but this is too right. complicated for one surgery. That's why they didn't do anything yet. So we'd have well, to look at the, it uh, completely one different. One yeah. Pardon yeah. me. Yeah, he's going to grab a pen again. Yeah, if you if you're a, um, if you're a baseball fan, the Mets had a pitcher, the Dark Knight, and he had a rib removed. Really? Because of the condition that Dr. Pinoza was describing. Yeah. Thoracic outlet. And it's funny because we wrote to the Mets and said to, him, to them, you don't need to do that. And they had the surgery the next day. But uh, oh, there you have it. Um, but what they're going to try to do to relieve the nerve ending pain is what they described as removing that rib, Doc. Well, yeah, well, it's just not true. It's going to be dangerous. It's just not true. Well, uh, yeah, bring what, a smoker and a barbecue sauce. We'll have a whole slab of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this guy. I like it. But, uh, Let me give you his you number up. again. You I'll get like... up with you guys later on, and uh, let me get back to work these next couple of weeks, and I'll, I'll get up with you and come see what I can oh, do. Oh, you're losing too much money. You you're losing so much money, buddy. Uh, you'll be in and out in, in uh, five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be shocked. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Tw- 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Listen, even <laughs> if it's an hour, okay, it, the average it's just, is 14 minutes. Just it's just, it's just <laughs> worth it's just worth getting that looked at because I the agree. solution yeah. they're going to give you yeah. is going to put you down for eight months. Right. And yeah, it's and not guaranteed when, when, to be When successful. all this happened, I got prescribed about 165 painkillers in the first yeah. month's time. Oh, my God. Yeah, so like that doesn't do any good. Day. That just makes you an addict. <laughs> they're just trying to all treat right. symptoms. All That's right, so call in. Next question. Thank you so much, sir. Hopefully Thanks. you come Thanks. in so you'll be taken yep. care of. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good question. Next question is Samantha from Boston. Doc writes, I am a marathon runner here in Boston, and I have been told I have arthritis in my knees. This prevents me from running races anymore. The pain is found in the front of the knee and prevents me from running. I was told around so many marathons that now my knees are bone on bone. Doc, Doc loves that one. Best bet is to get re- get it replaced. I watched and followed from the website that you were saying, and want to know if you can give me give me my back. Well, give, give me the back, back of my knees. knees. Give me back my knees. Okay, give me back my knees and to start running again. Yes, that, that's the front. That's the patellar pain, not not a knee pain. Okay. So you have to understand how the thing is made and where the usage comes from. Uh, there might be a contracture in the back of the knee, which puts the weight bearing in the front. So that means you have trouble climbing steps and getting out of a chair and so forth. But it's all fixable. It's all create. It's so it all falls <clears throat> under what you try. All falls under musculoskeletal pain. Isn't and, that amazing, uh, though, Doc? So many people having surgeries. I mean, the gentleman yes. that called, that, that surgery you're looking at, that's serious stuff. Over 200,000 people in the United States alone has had knee surgery that they did not need. Wow. Well, we don't we don't know who said that, but anyway, uh, I, I think none of them are needed. It was WebMed. None of them are needed. <laughs> no, but you know what? Uh, doctors don't. Uh, it, now, it's when just... they talk about bone on bone, they're only talking about two or three inches of bone. Right. That's all. Not the whole thing. Just a so that's small scar area. tissue there. Yeah, just a small area. You know, it's funny. Everyone I everyone I sent you who have had knee surgeries who's gone to you, you got rid of their scar tissue. Now they're living a great life. Yeah, right. Right. It's amazing. You have to know what you're looking at. You have to know the anatomy and what it's supposed to do. And then you could step back from it and say, this is what we have to do to fix mm-hmm. it. So it functions properly. But once you have a scar tissue, you cannot have it function properly. There's no way to do it, especially when you replace a knee. Right. You know how, how important the knees are? You can't just replace those like nothing to it. You know, what, no just, way. Before I would even talk, do a show with Dr. Pinozo, I had worked with him, and he 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 got rid of a groin injury that most football players are out for four weeks. Freddie, right over here, has had and Max, yeah, you've had, I've a, had a ton of stuff. So I mean, we're not just talking just to, uh, just to make Dr. Pinozo feel good. It has been it works. Let me let me get. I think I can get another question, Doc. Yeah. Kiki from Boston writes: My sister was watching your show and heard you say that scoliosis can be repaired by your procedure. I had the operation last year, and the pain is the worst thing I have ever felt in my life. My question to you is, can, can it be removed? And if I come in to see you, can you remove the pain? What would happen with the areas so I could be normal again? Well, uh, the, the, that's a complex question. We can remove yeah. the pain, but uh, the situation is that it's going to hurt again somewhere else because right. when they put those rods in there, 
Oh. They disturb a lot of stuff. Makes me sick to my stomach. I mean, think I about that, that. Especially when you're a young kid. Uh, hey, if anyone out there yeah. who has, knows somebody that's a, it's a just child. Terrible. You know, what uh, a nine-year-old was this... <laughs> How old was this kid? Uh, she, didn't give the, she didn't give the age doctors. Oh. Well, they all have a future, and you don't want to do something like that. So I mean, you have another question on a so nine-year-old with that guy. Yeah, well, no, yeah. Yeah. You guys, talk to yourself for a second while I find this one. Well, <laughs> well Max, you, you, you had a story also about a gentleman coming back. He had um, something removed, um, uh, vertigo or ringing in the ears. Ringing in the ears. And then he's coming back. No, oh, he's coming back on Monday because yep, because he treated one side. One side, because there's two sides to right. that equation, right? <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, it's based on a bad injury, too. Each one of them has a, had a motorcycle really? injury. Yes. And it requires a little more effort to get that uh, ringing out of there. But it's doable. It's possible. I saw a construction guy that must have been 10 <clears throat> feet tall who came out after you gave him the, sh the shot on the right side. He said, Wow. Just looked at me and said, I don't have ringing. <laughs> yeah. So, and the, and the other good thing about what Dr. Pinoza does, folks, is he, he has, this is his thing. You cannot leave his office until you don't feel the pain anymore. Yeah, right. that's... Yeah. Oh, until you're satisfied that you're yeah. getting a reduction. So you know what? We did the right job for if you. If you do 75% in the room, by the time they wake up in the morning, it's 100%. Yeah. I, I've had well, that. We had two interesting people, one from Germany... Oh, yeah, those were he really was a, good. He was a baron, by the way. I never met a baron before. I said, well, how's your castle? He said, we lost the castle years ago. So he's a baronet. <laughs> and a big-time movie producer, too. Out there. Really? How, and how yeah. did they hear about Dr. Panosa? Uh Patients uh, that they Preferred know here because they, they vacation here. And uh, one was from Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a lady, a shoulder, and one was from Germany. Wow. So we took care of both of them. And uh, he wanted to. <laughs> yeah, he wanted. He, he wanted. He wanted to have a CD of what I did. So he could show the people. So in he Germany. could show the people in uh, Germany what what they should uh, should have done for him. All they gotta do is go to your website in Germany. Just go to website Germany. Yeah, they can see it there too. Same Just, difference. Uh, but one other thing that was unique too, I saw like three of these, where somebody had uh, a fusion dud just on one side of their body. I had never videotaped that before. Well, and usually in medicine, everything's bilateral, so they do both sides, you know. Look at this guy. And we create, we create a monster. Look at this guy. <laughs> he's going he to have a white coat. So to tomorrow. see a fusion on one side doesn't make any sense at all. Is that true, Doc, what he's saying? Yep. You can go on vacation anytime you want. It would be Manx. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> I made this uh, thing, too. <laughs> but everybody hears these things. And they don't believe the it. The patients hear it, and they see it. So there's nothing hidden from you. I mean, it's not like a lot of places you go that they they walk away, they don't answer the question, and go to therapy. You know, that is not the way to go. No, you hear everything; it all makes sense to you, right there in front of you. I will tell you a quick story. I was at the hospital with my wife, and on the side of where she had to go get stuff done, it was <clears throat> therapy. Okay, so I said to myself, "Well, she won't be taken for a while." Let me go. So I sat in there, wrote my name down. I wrote down Jeff Manx, and I sat there. <laughs> Did you? Thank you. Yeah, well, I don't want to get in trouble. And I was talking to this guy. I said, hey, yeah, these guys good. He said, I've been coming here for, this is my seventh week. I said, seventh week. He had a problem with his hip that was causing him not to be able to uh, uh, play football in high school. Wow. So, uh, me like an idiot, I do carry cards with him. I gave him the card. I said, I guarantee you'll never, ever, ever, ever have to come back here again folks did i say ever ever <laughs> never never i can't are talk we got are one we done with the questions because yeah we got one there minute. were some good questions in there well we'll, we'll bring them back next week, week. I'll, I'll read them next week yeah. that I mean, may not be here maybe on vacation are you going on vacation again no okay are you going to retire no. he's retired oh yeah uh, no, I'm retiring oh <laughs> when when you when you get your bill from dr pinozo don't ask him is that all it is I'm yeah, serious. Sure. I mean, I see all these people try to do something stupid to get rid of pain. And you know what? I've had it. Freddie's had it. This Manx. gentleman over Manx has had it. And guess what happened? We're living proof that this thing works. Folks, thank you very much for tuning in. We, I hope you've learned uh, some stuff about what Dr. Pinozo does. Yep. Uh, if you want to be happy, healthy, and enjoy your life, call Dr. Pinozo at 561-381-5800. I want to bid you all adieu. I do. I do. I did, so you, you would do. And you and you. That's <laughs> from Sound of Music. We're yeah, talking from Sound of Music. See you next week.
This has been the Dr. Pinozo Sports and Medicine Hour with Dr. Anthony Pinozo. If you spend five minutes with Dr. Pinozo, you'll see he genuinely enjoys helping others. Visit Dr. Pinozo online at www.paincentersnationwide.com or call him at 561-381-5800. Dr. Pinozo will consult with you to determine the best solution to your pain needs. 561-381-5800 is the number to call, even if it's just for a second opinion. Join Dr. Pinozo next week when he brings you more important information on the physics of weight-bearing and engineer concepts for the body. WBZT West Palm Beach and iHeartRadio station. Help! I need somebody. Help! Not just anybody. Help!